going on guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about something that virtually no one else on YouTube outside of real business channels and science and education channels. We're gonna talk about math. Men lie, women lie, math doesn't lie. And I was looking through the comments and saw some people who want me to get into trucking, to run an experiment. And you know what? Truth be told, I actually thought about it until I did the math. This is one of the things that I've done. And I put up a video talking about how me getting in the car rental business was really good for me because it woke me the fuck up. And because essentially I have never had a business with a profit margin less than 50%. Let me say that again. I have never had a business with a profit margin less than 50%. And this guides me because I watch a lot of trucking videos and I'm going to tell you one of the main reasons, and there's a number of reasons why I will never get in the trucking business or the box trucking business or hot shot on none of these businesses. But the main one is if I went out and spent million five and bought 10 brand new trucks and trailers and went ahead and rented me a warehouse and got me a distribution center. Um, the biggest problem with trucking is drivers. Why? Because every driver has it in his or her head that they want to be an owner operator. No one wants to just get in a truck, drive and work a job and go home. And trucking is hard. So the turnover rate for trucking is extremely high. So I know that if I got in the trucking business, I would be looking at hiring. Like let's say I had 10 trucks. You know how many drivers that I would probably hire in one year? Close to a hundred drivers in one year to run my 10 trucks. So that means that I would have to have a full-time HR department, hiring department, hiring process. And that's the, that's, that's the number one reason that I will not get in trucking. The number two reason that I will not get tr in the trucking, cost. All right, moist men alert, moist men alert, Glendon about to start bragging. 2020, the year I made $3 million. You know what my operating costs per month were? My operating costs on the business that did $3 million. 4,500 bucks per month. So my operating costs for a business that did $3 million was $50,000 for the year. And the bulk of my operating cost went to my assistant. So with a track record in my storage auction business, I had a profit margin of 50%. So when I look at trucking, which automatically has very high expenses with insurance, expensive insurance, you know, with drivers, expense with fuel, expense with, there, there's so many expenses in trucking. Now, if I wanted to, like, let's say I had my holding company to the point where it was doing a hundred million a year and I wanted to create a business for deductions, that would be trucking. I would not even try to make a profit. I would go ahead and spend this money to create deductions to offset the earned income from other businesses. That would be the only way I would ever even consider even thinking about getting in trucking because from an expense ratio, it's a fucking nightmare. And I'm just sitting there like, I ain't doing that to myself. Cause like, let's take the car rental business, which like I said, woke me the fuck up. And the car rental business, the expense ratio was insane. A 35% wreck rate, which means if I had a hundred cars, I would have about 30 to, 30 to 35 cars wrecked at one point. So the asset is taking out of the money earning chain for three to five months. 
Um, I never made, I made revenue. The car rental business did like $150,000 in gross revenue, but my repair cost was 180. I am not getting, you know, cause and I'm going to say some other stuff in a minute, but what I'm getting, what Glendon Cameron's going to do, speaking to myself in the third person, what Glendon, Glendon Cameron going to stay in his own fucking lane. I am not going to go out and, you know, get in these trucking businesses because I know, I know why y'all want me to do it because I got the money, I can do it and I can do the content and entertain you monkeys. That's what you want. I am not, there ain't no fucking way I'm getting in trucking. There's no fucking way. Because here's the thing. What did I just say? I had a business that made me $3 million and it only cost me $50,000 to run. That's where I, I want to stay in that lane. I don't want to be in a business where I make $300,000, but it cost me 2.7 million to make that 300,000. I, 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 I ain't fucking with that. I'm, I'm, I'm not fucking with that. That's just, for me, that would be hustling backwards. Now, let me go ahead and to be 100% respectful, if you went ahead and got in trucking and it was your first successful business and you got to the point where you had 10 trucks and you did a million dollars, like your 10 trucks grossed, let's say 10 million and you brought a million home and that was your first successful business and that's the first money you felt that would feel good, that would be good for you and your family. So I'm not gonna shit on that, but for me, that would be hustling backwards. That would be hustling backwards. I'm not doing any of these, uh, I'm not doing drop shipping. Uh, to me, drop shipping is a horrible business model. When I was watching Jordan Welch, he had to spend 90,000 to make 10. I, and this is just one month. I spent less than half of that for a whole fucking year and made millions. There ain't no way I'm doing trucking. There's no way I'm doing drop, drop shipping. There's no way, and that's one of the things that um, I have not really put out because we're about to have this conversation. I have been studying businesses since I was in high school. And I've been studying profit margins, expense ratios, and at a minimum, you want a business with at least a 20% margin. At a minimum, you want 20%. 20% at a minimum. Optimally, you want to be at 35% margin. Now, what did I just tell you? I've never had a business that's had less than 50% margin. Because I've been studying this for years and years and years. And you want to know, because this is one of the things, like, let's, let's talk about this. Uh, I used to be affiliated with the resale space, which included eBay, Amazon, and there was a number of people who used to have fights on Facebook because Amazon FBA is an extremely low margin business. That's one of the reasons I don't fuck with Amazon FBA. Because, you know, this is what the drop shippers and the Amazon, they will tell you what their gross is. And there's me in the, in the back going, what's the net? What is the net profit? Because I'm not bamboozled by, well, yeah, we did 10 million last year with a net profit of 250,000. See, here's the thing, and this is one of the things that I have seen and I've learned from my research and studying businesses for decades. That if you have a low margin business, not a matter of if when times get difficult. Doesn't matter, it's not a matter of if, when. At some point, every business is going to experience a downturn. And if you have a business that makes low margin, you will not be able to build 
a war chest to get you through the bad times. So when you're doing these low margins and then when the bad times come, your margins get lower and the next thing you know, you're out of business. Because my margins have been so high, I was thinking about taking the whole damn year off. You can't do that with these low margin bitch businesses. You cannot do this. And like trucking, I, I see it. It's like we did 28,000 this month. And then when they start putting in the truck payment, the insurance, the fuel, that 28,000 goes down to 12,000 real quick, real quick. And also trucking. Um, Y'all don't know this, but I can drive a semi in the military. One of the trucks I was assigned to was a semi. I can actually I can I can shift gears. I can drive a truck. I don't have a CDL, but I could drive a semi, whether it's a man, I could do it. But why? Because see, one of the things I have noticed is that black folks get in a certain kind of business, Asian people get in a certain kind of business, and white people get in a certain kind of business. And if you go through YouTube and look at box truck, all you see are black faces. And if you go to YouTube and put in drop shipping, you see mostly white faces, a bunch of Asian kids. Why are certain business models attracting certain races? Because you will see trucking. Uh, trucking has a bunch of white dudes, semi-trucking. But box truck, like virtually 90% of the box truck videos on YouTube are by black YouTube creators. And I have a theory of why. People attempt what they think they can do. And for the average black person getting in a truck, picking up a load and dropping off a load is very logical, it's very easy, and it's something that they know they can do. Which is why I think that they gravitate towards because they know that if they put in the work, they can be successful. Now, doing something that I do, I'm over there with the white folks. There's not a lot. Now, I would say coming, you know, recently, in recent years, there have been a ton of black folks who've moved to online course creation and content creation. But for a long time, I would go to these conventions and these meetups, and I'd be the only darky there. So this is something that black folks are starting to come into, but not as many as white folks, because um, one of the things, because today was a, a planning day, and I'm just looking at some of the, I'm staying in my own lane. I am not getting, I mean, from an, an expense ratio, a lot of these businesses, to me, suck. Because um, when I launched Hustlers Kung Fu, I was making about 450 a year and it cost me $99 a month to run that business. $99 a month to run that business and I'm making about 30 high 30s to some months 40,000 a month. I I am not getting away from that. Fuck y'all. Like, yeah, get in the truck and go ahead cuz I I know a lot of y'all enjoy the car rental business debacle. And now that I'm kind of healed, it's funny. Like, I remember this chick who had one of my cars and I was like, bring my car back. And I was like, and then I said, my elbow hurts or something. She said, you need to see a doctor about that. I was like, bitch, bring my car back. I'm not, I'm not getting into another high expense business with a low profit. I'm not, like, you know, trucking can be extremely lucrative if done right. It can be extremely lucrative, especially if you're running dedicated lanes and you have a good handle on your expenses and you don't have a lot of debt. Trucking can be really lucrative, but I have no 
interest in trucking. Because once again, the car rental business taught me a lot. Like right now, box trucking is white hot. Box trucking, get a box truck, rent a box truck, do Amazon Relay. There's, there's a multitude of YouTube videos talking about that. And I, 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 I can't fuck with it. I can't fuck with it. I'm just like, I mean, moist men alert. I make more money per month than most of these folks make all year long being away from friends and family for weeks at a time. And I make this money from my house sitting on my ass. Why the hell am I going to get in the business? Like, like I said, that car rental business taught me so much. And one of the reasons I hated the car rental business is it, it took my freedom. Cause up to that point, I can do what I want. I mean, sometimes y'all didn't even know I wasn't even in town. I would pre-record some videos and be off in Miami. You cannot do that with a lot of these other businesses until you get these businesses to a point where you can hire people to run it for you. But I don't have to hire no one to run this business and it provides me money, freedom, and time freedom. And I'm going to double down on this shit. I am not, I'm not, I'm not. Cause I, I, like, I saw people in that conversation. Cause like y'all want to see me do it because it'll be funny and I can take the hit. But from a personal satisfaction and happiness factor, mm -mm. like, let me go ahead and tell you the first revision of the thought that I was going to start a trucking company called Purple, Purple Dog Trucking. And all the trucks were going to be purple and the trucks were going to be new and the trailers were going to be new. I had even went so far that I found um, a distribution center, what would, would have been my distribution center in Doraville. Uh, it was a big ass warehouse. It had 12 doors, huge yard. Uh, the rent was going to be about 10,000 a month. Oh yeah, I worked it up. I worked out the cost at the time truck. I can get a brand new truck for less than 100K. I can get a brand new trailer for about 15. So that was gonna be like a million in semis and about um, 150,000 in brand new trailers. And then I was gonna have to hire people. I had worked out the whole business plan because I was going, bam, get 10 trucks. And then this was something that I was gonna do where my unique experience would have helped me, I was going to get a sales team. I was going to get people to call shippers and get direct contracts versus going on the DAT board. So I, I was like that, cl I was that close to doing it. And then I realized, cause I, you know, I knew how I, cause you know, when I worked at rent a crate, and I worked in selling, I kind of had some logistic distribution experience. So I kind of knew what that involved. And I was like, you're not going to be able to fuck your chick at 12 o'clock and during the middle of the day with this kind of business. Cause it's going to demand that you be there for at least two to three years. And I was like, eh, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing it. But yeah. And then the box truck business. And also once again, not to be disrespectful. If you are a hard charging entrepreneur and you're getting in the semi lane or you're getting in the, the box truck lane and you realize financial success, God bless you. I ain't shitting on that. I'm just saying that shit ain't for me. You know, it, it, it could be, it's for somebody and there are people out there right now. There's a guy who, uh, Alex of good energy. Now this is going to be funny. I was watching Alex and Alex was giving truckers free gas and I listened to a lot of his interviews and then, you know, Alex has made more money selling his course than he did from the trucking business. He's got 14,000 students at uh, $2,000 per student. Add that up. 14,000 times $2,000. Add that up. And cause uh, I actually think Alex lives in this building. Cause I've seen a dude that looks like him and he drives a Urus, I think. 
I'm not sure. I'm not 100% correct. But Alex has made way more money from selling his trucking, which from my understanding is a very good how to get in trucking course. I hear that it's superb that he really put his heart in there. And once again, I'm not shitting on Alex. I'm just pointing out a fact that Alex has made more money selling his online course than he has running his trucking business. Terry Ijamama, whatever her name is, has made more money selling her trading course than she's actually made trading. I want you to think about that because uh, one time I was talking about it because once again, Glendon Cameron can do math and I, I know people who trade. I know some successful people who trade and Terry, to her credit, actually came on the live stream and said, no, she wasn't making that kind of money until she starts selling her course. There are very few traders who can make $10 million a year because like it's, you, you want to know how big your trading account have to be for you to make 10 million a year trading. You need a $50 million trading account. Terry didn't have that. Terry still don't have that kind of money. Terry still don't have that kind of money. So I'm going to double down. I'm going to stick in my lane. I am not fucking with these high expensive expense ratio businesses when I have made millions sitting on my ass at home. Like I said, that car rental business, it woke me, it woke me the fuck up because um, for a lot of parts, I don't think that I really respected what I did because it was so easy. But now I have a profound level of gratitude and I have a different level of respect for what I have done than I did before all this stuff. Because I'm like, I, I sit here and I pocket watch business models all day long. And I am seeing people where I make more money in one month than they make all, the, all year long and they're spending buku money. Like this whole business of doing drop shipping and hiring influencers, the influencer economy, that's stupid. Um, I'm like, these influencers are not playing. I mean, they want, I know, I, saw, I, know, I know someone who's an influencer who has a big channel. It's 250K to walk through his door. If you ain't talking 250K, he ain't trying to hear you. And he gets it 10, 10 to 20 times a year. Cause he's got like 15 million subscribers on YouTube. He's got like 5 million subscribers of followers on Instagram. And I think he's grown to like 10 million on TikTok. 250 just to get his attention or he, he like, I, I ain't trying to hear you because uh, he was telling me, he's like, why work with all of these small budgets when I can work with just literally a handful of brands and make millions and not work as hard. And I was like, you got a point, my G as we were riding down. Uh, Cause he lives in California as we were riding down the street in his G wagon. Um, once again, like I know a lot of y'all want to see me do what I call black folk businesses and I am, I'm staying the fuck away from that. I'm just, mm -mm. can't do it because right now I'm in this expensive ass apartment. I ain't even working right now. I'm not even working. I do have income coming in from YouTube and some other stuff I set up, but I am not, I'm not even in, I would say I'm running at 10% right now. I'm chilling. And like I was in trucking, I would be like, hello, what do you mean you quit? And you're leaving the truck in California? So at this point, 
I got to find another driver, fly the driver out with a, with the second set of keys to, because once again, this driver, he didn't even leave the keys. He just left the truck in California with a full load. So I got to fly someone out there to deliver that load, which is going to be late. Ah, no, 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 no. I learned dealing with a whole bunch of employees with my uh, marketing agency. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I ain't trying to do that. Because like I said, I, I know y'all would love to see me do the trucking business or box truck business and put out videos and talk about how I'm cussing out people and cussing out drivers. It, will, it could be a good show, but I'm about to say something. I'm 55 years of age. I am not trying to work that hard. There, I said it. I'm not trying to work that hard. You know, the year I made three million, I wasn't working a 40 hour week. The car rental business, I was working 15, 16 hour fucking days to make no money, to make no money. Fuck that. Cause I know a lot of y'all want to see me do this stuff. Like, but you know, I'm like, I am not doing trucking. I am staying as far away from trucking as possible because for me, like I said, I would have to get my portfolio companies to a hundred million. And then again, probably what I would do instead of trucking is real estate to get those tax advantages because I would have way less hassles with real estate. Cause I'm at the point where I don't have a lot of tolerance for hassle and problems and, and issues and stuff. I just don't have it. Just don't have no bandwidth for it. So I will never start a business that I know going in the door is nothing but problems. And trucking, that's trucking. There's trucking. That's why the average trucking company has five to six trucks. Because once you get to 10, 20, every truck that you get increases your problematic ratio. Like when I had six to seven rental cars, it really wasn't that bad. But when I got to 15, that's when the bullshit started. And when I got to 30, it was something every fucking day. Every fucking day. Oh, I lost the keys. Oh, I had a flat. Oh, there's some wrong. Every time I turn around, it was a damn problem. Like I said, I'm 55 years of age. I'm cruising into retirement. I am not fighting, kicking, and killing drag. I, shh. <laughs> My life is going to pretty much stay the way that it is right now. I don't have no hassles. I have no problems. Like today, I woke up and I felt like going to Cracker Barrel. And I went to Cracker Barrel. And then I got my car washed. Then I came home and I made a video and I made another video. Then I'm gonna go get my other car washed and I'm gonna do some shopping. See, here's the thing. This is why I'm not trying to quote, retire to sit around and, cause I get to do what I wanna do with my time already. Uh, I gotta renew my passport. I gotta work on that. Thinking about going to the Bahamas, chilling. Y'all won't know about it unless I did some videos down there. And that's one thing that I, I'm really glad that I didn't do. Um, I took a lot of trips, but I didn't really tell y'all about it. Cause what I did is I did a lot of pre-recorded content before I left. Yeah, I had no clue I was gone. No clue I was gone. And you know, since I'm not showing receipts and let's talk about that. Oh. Uh, what we've been talking about the global reset, right? A lot of pain, a lot of people who are experiencing um, economic hardship. I feel that one of the reasons that I got so much drama isn't because I got some young pussy that had nothing to do with it. You're like, well, Glendon, no, that what you did was absolutely really. I got a question for you. Is R. Kelly dead? 
where's R. Kelly? R. Kelly is in prison. And what are they supposed to do to people like R. Kelly? They supposed to kill him. R. Kelly is in prison singing songs and making friends. So it wasn't the fact that I got some young pussy. Number one, I'm black. And that was something that was impressed upon me. And who was coming after me? Was it white YouTubers? Mm -mm. It was unsuccessful, broke ass, bum Negroes who ain't ever did shit in life. Like when I come up here and talk about, I went to the Porsche dealership and left with a Porsche and dropped a check. That's kind of lottery shit to a lot of you broke ass Negroes. So what I've learned is that I am not going to ever be showing receipts and checks and H that, that's, that's over. Because as the economy melts down and more people suffer, um, like I will tell you something I did. I have a friend who got globally reset and I didn't know that um, she needed some medical work and um, she couldn't afford a deductible. So I just like, here, here, I gave her the money. Go ahead and get your procedures done. So my charity has been a lot more during this time because if I know you, you're a good person and I can help you, I'll help you. And I'm doing more of that versus flexing and stunned and talking about millionaire game. I feel that is some of the most insipid, stupidest bullshit ever. Millionaire game. Let me go ahead and give you a little hint. I can tell you step by step exactly what I did to make my millions. And you can't do it. You want to know why? It's not because you're stupid. That has nothing to do with it. You do not have the habits and the behaviors and the rituals and routines to do it because if you did, you'd already be rich. See, this whole thing is like pouring in the people, pouring in the people. If the, like, give you an example. Bryce Young, the quarterback for Alabama, I guarantee you, if you research, Bryce Young went to every quarterback prep camp. But see, here's the thing. All of these five-star recruits, they have natural athletic ability, which you cannot, you can't buy that shit. And then they have a very good work ethic. So when you take natural athletic ability, a very good work ethic, and then you put them in these camps, this is how you get these five-star athletes. So what I'm saying is, if you don't have the organic material, I like Tom Brady, like Tom Brady can go, arguably the greatest quarterback in the NFL, Tom Brady can go on the street, pick a guy and work with this guy for a year, and this guy will never ever start for an NFL team because he doesn't have the material. He doesn't have the material. Like uh, Justin Herbert, the Chargers quarterback. He's like 6'4". This dude has a cannon for an arm. He can be over here near the end zone and damn near throw the ball from this end zone across the field, which is longer, to the other end zone. You can't buy that shit. He was born with it. And through quarterback camps and grooming and hard work, he, got, he, he maximized his potential. See, a lot of you are trying to like, you know, I, I saw the lead attorney talking about create a YouTube course. And if you don't have charisma, the natural talent, uh, you could take his course and it ain't going to do a, it, it, it ain't going to do shit for you because you don't have the organic ingredients as the late Bino Smith used to say, the right material. See, that's one of the things I learned from teaching and training people. Because um, when I was doing 30 days to 2,500, I had a guy who was doing $10,000 a month and he took the course, he got up to $40,000 a month. Why? Because he had the right material. 
So if you are a bum, and when I'm gonna say a bum, if you're a person where someone's gotta tell you what to do, you ain't gonna make it as an entrepreneur. If you're someone that needs structure and routine, you ain't gonna make it as an entrepreneur. And th this is one of the reasons that so many people, cause I don't, you know, I used to believe that anybody can make it in America, anyone. Now to a degree, I feel that most people, if they fully develop themselves and optimize their potential, can get to 250. I feel that most people can get there. But multiple millions a year, mm-mm. Billionaire, like, I, I have no illusions that I will ever be a billionaire. And I have people like, hey man, no, you can be a bi No, 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 no. See, to be a billionaire, you need to own BMW, um, Louis Vuitton, you need to be a well apple. You, uh, uh, I have no illusions. You know, somebody called Dave Ramsey. He was 23, and it's like, what can I do to become a billionaire? And Dave was like, the son, I ain't gonna become a billionaire. I'm not gonna become a billionaire, and I'm worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and I'm not gonna become a billionaire. And you got these people who feel because if they manifest it i could become a billionaire you can manifest until your asshole turns to fire you ain't gonna become a billionaire now if you build a business that scales and become a household name you very well could become a billionaire but without that business and if you go through all the billionaires in the world they all own businesses and then someone's like well what about warren buffett you got one guy out of 2,500 people. That's called a statistical anomaly. So it ain't like it's normal or practical. It's like, what about Warren Buffett? Then I had someone was talking about multiple streams of income and they brought up Grant Carzone. Grant ain't a normal motherfucker. Grant has multiple million dollar businesses. Grant has teams. And you got all these folks on YouTube talking about, I have seven, I have eight, I have 21 streams of income and it's just me. Bullshit. I call bullshit on that. It is so hard to develop one stable, large income stream, let alone, you know, once again, Grant Carnone, he has his real estate, he has his online course business, his $150 million a year business. He has the 10X event, which I think does like 30 million. Grant ain't normal. And I love when people used to use exception as if it's the norm. Like, once again, Tom Brady, he ain't normal. Patrick Mahomes, he ain't normal. No one who's at a high level in the NFL, at a high level in the NFB, in NBA, at a high level in Major League Baseball, and a high level in soccer, uh, Lewis Hamilton, the motherfucker ain't normal. Lewis Hamilton makes $90 million driving the race car. Because he ain't normal. He has a brother who was trying to drive, and his brother ain't even close to what Lewis can do. Because one of the things, because if you ever notice, the best race car drivers are actually small. They're usually like five, nine at the tallest and maybe 150 pounds. Because if you've ever been in the race car and you start going it and you throw that, that car in the corner, those G forces, you feel that shit in your body. Fighter pilots, same thing. Um, do you know that less than 100 people in the United States will ever fly a B B one bomber, because they don't they don't have the material. There's a number of folks who can become fighter pilots, race car drivers, rangers, and seals. I was in Hawaii. I used to see the rangers and the seals, and all of these were they were not big, muscular. No, 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 no. All the motherfuckers were small. They were small and nimble. Every last one of them, all of the Rangers, all of the SEALs. I've, I've seen some tall SEALs, like 6'1", 6'3", but they all skinny. 
None of these folks are huge and like Avengers, like the Hulk or Batman. No, 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 no. You have to have certain physical attributes to perform at a high level in the NFL, NBA, be a race car driver, be a fire pilot. And if you don't have those ingrained natural attributes, guess what? You're not flying that jet. You're not playing in the NFL. University of Alabama, you, don't, you, don't, you wanna know why they're so successful? They get the right material. University of Alabama has like 120 active players in the NFL right now. Largest number of NFL players of any school. Let me say that again. The University of Alabama, Google it, has more active NFL players. University of Alabama has not one, not two, but three guys starting as quarterback in the NFL right now. And next year when Bryce comes out, it will be four. Success leaves clues. The reason Alabama has all these national championships is because they recruit the right material over and over and over. It's a schematic. It's a system. Even when Nick Saban leaves, guess what? Alabama's still going to win national championships because Alabama is an institution. So one of the things, you know, I just wanted to sit here and chat with you guys. And I have a video for all my entrepreneurs and hard charging people on the corporate game, because I'm getting ready to, to change up my programming and schematic a little bit. So watch that video. It's going to be at the first link and it's, it's a very important video and it's not a video that's going to get a lot of views, but if you start a business, it's going to be helpful and it's going to help you protect your business money. So send the first link below.